Hello, welcome back to Sweet MTG, and welcome to Instant Deck Techs. In this series, we go over everything you need to build a certain commander. We'll go over the strategies and the types of cards needed you need to get the deck working. Any cards we mention will be down in the description below. In this video, we're going to be looking at Cedrus the Traitor King. It is 3 blue, black, red for a 5 5 legendary creature, Zombie Warrior, with Each creature card in your graveyard has unearthed for 2 and a black. This means you return the creature from your graveyard to the battlefield and it gains haste. You exile it at the beginning of the next end step or if it leaves the battlefield, and you can only activate this ability as a sorcery. Cedrus has always been a really cool card, but as time has gone on, more and more cards have been printed that break it wide open. Cheating on mana is always a sign that you're doing something broken, and that unearth ability will let us cheat into play some really big and dumb creatures, for well under how much it would cost to normally cast them. When played fairly, it's a decent trade off for the creature to then get exiled at the end of turn, but we're not here to play fair. We're going to obviously be finding ways around that downside so we can keep our huge creatures and hit the life totals again and again. This first section will really go over how we can break that unearth downside. First we have a Beaker and Sundial of the Infinite. That both let us tap them to end the turn. How this works is you unearth your creature, and then you go to your end step. You announce you're putting the unearth trigger on the stack, and then tap one of these to end the turn. The exile at end of turn effect then fizzles, and you get to keep your creature. One thing to note is that they will get exiled if they go back to the graveyard at a later point. Another way of getting around the exile effect is with Teferi's Veil. With this card in play, you unearth your creatures back, and then you attack with them. Teferi's Veil will then phase out any creature that attacked. As the unearthed creature is phased out, it's not affected by the end of turn exile effect of unearth. Again, meaning you get to keep your creature. Then we have some flicker effects. With these, the creature leaves the battlefield, so the unearthed exile effect will get triggered. If you say you're stacking the triggers so that the flicker effect resolves first, this means that it happens before the exile effect of unearth. As the flicker effect is sending it to exile, unearth doesn't care and lets this happen. The flicker effect then resolves, which brings it back from the exile and onto the battlefield as a new permanent, with no ill effects from being unearthed. Then lastly we have Endless Sands, which works in a similar way to the flicker effects, as it has a way built in to bring back the creature from exile. Of all the cards we've mentioned, these will be among the most important, as they really take the deck from a quick flash in the pan to a game winner. To get all that working, we need creatures in our graveyard. This is where some self mill comes into play, and this will overlap with our card draw quite a little bit. The best example of this is on our instants and sorceries that draw us cards, while also importantly putting things into the graveyard. These are great as some targeted discard, so we can help sculpt our hand with the end of turn, with the ramp cards and the interaction, while also putting those big creatures into the graveyard so we can unearth them back. If you're a little impatient however, or you need something to help turbocharge this a little bit, then you can look at some windfall effects. These not only dump all the cards in our hand into our graveyard, but they also really mess up our opponent's plans as well. Then there is Altar of Dementia. In this deck where we'll have loads of really large creatures with good end to the battlefield effects, once we've got the value we need off of them, we can sacrifice them to the altar to fuel our next couple of turns. And those big creatures will really like being cheated into play with Cemetery Tampering's Hideaway ability. In this deck it won't be hard to get the 20 cards it needs to activate, and especially as it sits there and mills us for 3 every turn. It's probably worth mentioning some graveyard tutors as well in this section, which can go through our deck and get the exact card that we need and put it straight into our graveyard. These are obviously really strong, as they get us the exact thing that we need at that moment, be it interaction or a game winning spell. Moving over to our dedicated card draw, we don't need anywhere near as much as a regular deck because we have all that self mill. What we are going to run will primarily be on creatures that draw us cards when they enter the battlefield. These are just really great value creatures that help out our game plan and get even better with some of the flicker cards that we're already running. Then you have cards like Disciple of Bolus and Shadowheart Dark Justice R, which let us sacrifice a creature to draw some cards. We'll get onto the beef a bit later on, but these cards will love cashing them in for some extra card draw. Then you have a card like River Kelpie, which draws us cards whenever a creature enters the battlefield from a graveyard, perfect in this deck with all the unearthed creatures coming back to play. Moving over to our ramp, these colours don't give us too much variety with options, but there are still some nice includes in there. First up is Embalmer's Tools, which reduce the unearthed cost of the cards in our graveyard by 1, which makes the unearthed cost of all of our creatures just 1 and a black. This can make a huge difference, and can open up the door to bringing back a ton of creatures in a turn. The base of our ramp however, will be made of the tried and true mana rocks. I would really want to run a good amount here, as they'll help us get Cedrus out, and then also let us casting our big threats as well. For some more interesting options, we first have Cursed Mirror, which is a rock that can also come in as a copy of a huge creature of ours, which will obviously be very impactful. Then we have Chromatic Lantern, which I just really like in a 3 colour deck, as the quality of life you get from all your lands fixing for you is worth its inclusion. Then lastly we have Solemn Simulacrum, as it ramps us and draws us a card, and is a perfect card to bring back with Unearth while we build up to some big turns. Moving over to our interaction, there are plenty of solid options in Grixis. 
First up is some removal on creatures. These can be cast, unearthed and flickered to your heart's desire, and do a great job of keeping our opponent's shenanigans in check. Then you have some of the best and most efficient instants and sorceries in all of Magic. Run the ones that work best for your budget and your playgroup. With any interaction section, start with 8 bits in total and then go up from there, the more competitive that playgroup is. A big part of the game plan in this deck revolves around the unearth ability of Cedrus, and for that to work we need it in play. Lightning Grease and Swiftfoot Groots will be as solid as always at stopping it from dying to targeted removal. And then no graveyard heavy deck should leave home without a perpetual timepiece. It helps us mill, and then protects our key pieces from anyone running some graveyard hate. Ok, let's move on to some ways of winning the game, and we have some really fun options to go through. First up is some really big, really stupid creatures with super impactful enter the battlefield effects. You want some big power, some evasion, and a great effect straight away. Burning Rune Demon tutors two cards, one to our hand, one to the graveyard, so we can get out another big threat. Itali Primal Storm will start ripping spells from our opponent's libraries. Another thing about Grave Titan makes 14 power and toughness over 5 bodies in a turn. Then you have Deluvian Primordial and Sepulchral Primordial are some of my favourite budget options out there, as they're able to take the best things from our opponent's graveyards and turn them against them. Then you have Archon of Cruelty, which can strip an opponent completely of resources. And then you have Nezahol Prime Tide, which has its own built in flicker ability while also being a discard outlet, so it can be unearthed and then stick around by itself. And then talking of flicker effects, with them Agent of Treachery can quickly get out of hand, and all but guarantee we have the best board state at the table. There's plenty more options out there, and you can really tailor this section to suit how you like to play and also how you like to win. To help get those creatures out, especially if Cedrus is ever removed, we can run some additional reanimation effects. There's plenty of other effects out there, but generally I would like them to be on creatures, as they just work well with Cedrus and everything else that we're doing. Talking of, this is one of the best decks for a cheeky sneak attack. It works with all the Cedrus Matters cards that we've mentioned at the start, and you get them for just an upfront cost of a red mana. Even without them, it's still one of the best discard outlets in the deck. You pay that red mana to get the creature into play, you get all the value from any end of the battlefield effects, it gets to swing, and then goes to the graveyard, ready to be unearthed next turn with Cedrus. Then a couple of other cards that work really well with the big creatures, we have Flame Shadow Conjuring, Mirror March, and Phantom Steed. Giving extra copies of those swingy effects will obviously be great, but even copying a value card draw creature or a solemn simulacrum will be worth their inclusion. Next up we have some big damage effects. You have Flare of the Hatebound, Terror of the Peaks, and Warstorm Surge, which all deal damage when one of our big creatures comes into play. Next up is a bit of combo fun, with Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker, and then a creature that comes in and can untap it. This allows you to rinse and repeat, and make an exponentially large board state to win on the spot. And then we have some cards that go really well in mill decks with a lot of big top ends, and those are Living Death and Rise of the Dark Realms. These bring back a ton of creatures all in one go, and are a great late game haymaker when you really need to win a game out of nowhere. Rounding off the video with some utility lands, as we're in 3 colours we can't run a super large amount, but there are still some solid options that we can look at. I primarily want to look for cards that add to the self mill that the deck has, with cards like Gear Reach Sanitarium, Nefalia Drownyard, Desolate Lighthouse, Cephalid Colosseum and Dakmore Salvage all being great bits on lands that are basically free to run. The rest of your mana base will be very dependent on what you have available to you. We recently released a video with some advice on building a deck with a budget mana base which might be of help. Until next time, please like, share and subscribe, and let us know down in the comments if there are any commanders you'd like to see a deck tech on. Thank you very much for watching.